remember, for arriving aircraft, that parallel runways may be used for independent parallel approaches, ILS approaches, dependent parallel approaches, radar separation applied, segregated parallel operations, one for takeoff, one for landing. As early as possible, after an aircraft has checked in with approach, the aircraft will be advised that parallel runway operations are in progress. The runways to be used will be identified and the ILS MLS frequencies will be passed to the pilot by means of terminal voice broadcasts. ATIS. Whilst vectoring to intercept the ILS or MLS final track, the final vector is to be such to enable the aircraft to intercept it at an angle not greater than 30 degrees and to provide at least one nautical mile straight and level flight prior to interception. The vector shall also allow level flight for at least two nautical miles prior to intercepting the glide path. If an aircraft overshoots the turn onto track and as a result will penetrate the NTZ, ATC will issue correcting instructions to the pilot. If the aircraft does penetrate the NTZ, then the adjacent aircraft will be given instructions to take up new headings and altitudes to avoid the deviating aircraft. Radar monitoring shall not be terminated until visual separation is confirmed, the aircraft has landed, or in the event of a missed approach, is at least one nautical mile beyond the departure, DER, and adequate separation exists. Aircraft commanders will not be told that a radar service has been terminated. A minimum of 1,000 feet of vertical and three nautical miles of horizontal radar separation is to be provided until aircraft are either inbound on the ILS or MLS final track or within the NOZ. Wake turbulence separation criteria may increase the lateral separation distances. Separation between aircraft on adjacent approaches is achieved provided neither aircraft penetrate the NTZ. When an approach controller assigns the final intercept heading for the ILS localizer or MLS track, they will advise the aircraft of its position relative to a fix on the localizer or MLS track, the altitude to be maintained until established on the localizer or MLS track to the ILS glide path, and clearance for the ILS or MLS track approach. Dependent approaches maintaining radar separation between aircraft on adjacent tracks are permitted when the provisions of independent approaches are met and the radar controller has the capability to override the aerodrome radio transmissions frequencies. Whilst under such radar control, aircraft must maintain a minimum separation of a thousand feet vertically or three nautical miles laterally during their turns onto parallel localizers or MLS tracks. Once established on an ILS localizer or MLS track, radar separation is to be three nautical miles between aircraft on the same ILS unless wake turbulence requires greater longitudinal separation and two nautical miles between aircraft on adjacent localizers or MLS tracks. Segregated operations are permitted when the normal departure track diverges immediately after takeoff by at least 30 degrees from the missed approach track of the adjacent approach. The minimum distance between runways for segregated operations is 760 meters. This may be reduced by 30 meters for each 150 meters that the arrival runway is staggered towards the approach subject to a minimum of 300 meters. It should increase by 30 meters for every 150 meters that the runway is staggered away from arriving aircraft. ILS or MLS precision radar or visual approaches may be conducted in segregated parallel operations provided suitable surveillance radar and ground facilities exist for the specific type of approach.